The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends miracles is to show mankind this person is not a liar. He is not a fraud. He is not a charlatan. He is indeed somebody whom I am helping. And I will prove this help to you in a manner that will beyond the shadow of a doubt manifest itself as being directly from God. And so when our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came, the Quraysh also demanded miracles. They demanded miracles as well. And they said, why don't you cause the angels to come down? Why don't you split up the earth and cause rivers to flow in this barren land of Mecca? Why don't you make this desert into a green area? They wanted miracles. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them miracles. He gave them many miracles, but he gave them the ultimate miracle as well. And that is the miracle of the Quran. How and why is the Quran the ultimate miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the response to that is that all of the miracles of the Prophets that were before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were temporary miracles. Let me ask you, has anybody seen the splitting up of the Red Sea? Did anybody witness that? Were any of you there? So those miracles were miracles to those who saw them. The miracle of the Quran removes the time space constraints on all the other miracles. And that is why the miracle of the Quran is called the eternal miracle, the everlasting miracle. It is a miracle I can touch, I can feel, I can see, I can recite. These are a miracle my senses can attest to. The fact that Allah mentions facts and points in the Quran that were humanly impossible to know at the time and era of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And all of you are familiar with some examples of these. And the most clear example in my mind is the description of the human embryo. How Allah described the evolution of the human embryo from the sperm and the zygote, from this small little clinging thing. Allah calls a child in the womb. Allah calls it that which hangs, al-alaq. No human being knew that an embryo hangs from the womb of the mother. Nobody knew this until 300 years ago. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it that which hangs. It's a hanging thing because it is a clinging to the embryo of the mother. فَإِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ عَلَقَةٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ عَلَقَةٍ ثُمَّ مِنْ مُضْغَةٍ مُخَلَّقَةٍ وَغَيْرِ مُخَلَّقَةٍ مُخَلَّقَةٍ وَغَيْرِ مُخَلَّقَةٍ لِنُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ وَنُقِرُّ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ مَا نَشَاءٍ Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely, absolutely no scientific training. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls an embryo, that creation which we created in three veils of darkness. And if you look at the layers of the embryo, there are literally three layers that separate the embryo from the outside world. So many precise things in the Quran. Here is a cross section of the embryo. And there are three important uh, layers to remember. These are the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. 